uh, now we remove the cylinder and uh, it's time to port it. I'm gonna show you some simple tips how you easily can mark your ports and uh, how you want to how you should angle your grinder and all that. And uh, the first thing is I use on I use a simple blue uh, art line 70 pen and I just paint one where I want to port my cylinder. I'm gonna raise this side ports for the exhaust. So I just, you don't have to be precise, you just paint a lot around it like this. So you can see your lines easier, because the nickel seal is really hard, so it's not so easy to make marks in it. And I'm gonna raise this side port two millimeters. I already set my meter on 38.68 millimeters from the top here and that will raise the port two millimeters higher than it is original and I just do like this and you have your mark so you have something to go on I don't know if it's that easy to see in the camera if you shine some light on it maybe like this can you see it now maybe? Yeah. So, and that's what I'm gonna do with all the ports. I'm gonna paint it and mark how high I want to do them. And then I'm gonna make marks in, uh, in this direction also. So I can see, so I keep a straight line from the port. So I make it the same size as it is because you don't want to this side you don't want to go in this direction because you're gonna have a short circuit between this port and this port when uh, your piston is coming up and this one, the brick pin, will connect your ports and would make a short circuit so your fresh air will go in this one and out in the exhaust port. And it's not good for your for your horsepowers. So I'm gonna mark them all, and uh, we're gonna start porting it. Now I'm doing the lines for, so I just can keep the port square at this, as it is original. And just so I have some guidelines to go with. I often do a lot of things on, without any lines, but it's always good to have them. It just makes everything easier to make everything look the same. I'm going to show you the basic uh, tools for porting. I use uh, one straight small pen grinder. It's very easy, promotic grinder. And I have one small angled promotic grinder. And I have one bigger one with long, uh, I don't know what to call this, burrs I think is the name is, but so you can reach in, like if you pour your uh, intake ports and stuff like that, you can reach in and when you're gonna take a lot of material off, this is good to use. But Always keep a steady grip. Not, don't like hold it like this and go in like this because it will start going around in the cylinder and you're gonna damage your nickel seal. And so always have, I always use two hands. And I use one hand to hold it and one hand to hold my hand. 
like this so you have a really steady grip and it's you can always like put your finger against the cylinder wall like this or just hold it like that and hold your hand steady and have good light so you see what you're doing because it's if it when you're grinding like this it's very easy to the grinder catches grip in the cylinder and it goes like this and you grind your nika seal and then you have to send in your cylinder to repair it Now I use the straight one just to take the nickel seal off because it's easier to grind it like this than to grind the nickel seal off like that. It has a just easier way to do it. Now we have raised one of the exhaust ports. Uh, you can see down here that this side is raised up two millimeters up, and I make it uh, a little bit angled, so it will increase flow. Your exhaust flow will increase when you have a port that is leaned into the exhaust port. I have uh, ported the side port from the, this side now and I made the area through this port a little bit bigger and I have straightened it out so if you see on the original one it has like a lump here and it's aimed more in like this and with this one you aim it more to the center of your exhaust it will make it flow better and just make it work better than original a very important thing to remember when you port cylinders is that you need to grind down your sharp edges. When you have ported with one of these, uh, the nickel seal gets really sharp like a knife and you need to grind that down with a sand grinder. It's just a small sand sandpaper roll and you grind your edges down. So where you have ported, you grind from your cylinder and you grind all your sharp edges and then you take your finger and you feel that you don't have a sharp edge or anything pointing out or something like that because if you have that your piston will damage and if you have it on these ports your piston on these ports that I've ported now if you have one of those sharp edges on that your piston ring will take uh, it will get stuck in it and you will ruin both your cylinder and your piston. So very important, do not forget. Uh, now the porting is all done. Uh, I have lowered the intake port, 2 millimeters, And I have raised the side port for the exhaust, uh, 2 millimeters also. This port, this port this one and this one and now we're all done with uh, putting it together again after the porting and uh, I'm adjusting the fuel now on the power commander putting up some serious extra fuel I put 4% more than we ever had before on the top and a little bit around it just to be safe and uh, it's easier to go down from too rich than breaking something from too lean so uh, now we're gonna just make a short test run and see that everything works and I'm gonna just push it full throttle for a short couple of seconds just to see that I don't get check engine that I don't have any sounds or leakage or anything like that 
and I can see on the IFR and on the horsepower if everything looks okay. So let's go for it. We were rich, very rich, so taking it down in fuel again, so now we're on 5% extra fuel, we were on 8 before. I think we found the problem, maybe. The, we can see now that the RPM has went up a lot since we ported it. It, it peaks on 8200 RPMs. And uh, after some uh, considerations, I, I think that the pipe needs to be a little bit shorter because uh, Probably when I increase the area of the port, of the exhaust port of the cylinder, it wants to go to a higher RPM. That was not what I intended. I wanted to stay on the same RPM, but now it is what it is. So I have to try to shorten the pipe and see, I'm going to shorten it one centimeter and see in what directions I will go if I will gain horsepower, so if I will just lose more. But I need to try something and I can see on the dyno that it wants to rev higher than it did before. We made one pull, it pulled almost to 8200 RPMs. Not any high horsepower, but the rev wants to go up and that makes the, the pipe out of tune. The pulse doesn't hit in the exactly right moment as it should. So I'm gonna shorten it one centimeters. Now I'm making this 8 millimeters because of the thickness of the disc. So I'm losing 1 millimeter per cut. So that's why I'm using 8 millimeters and cutting away 8 millimeters. And I will try to have the disc on the inner side of this line. I should get around 1 centimeter. One more good thing is when you cut the pipe like this. If you just use your measurement tool and carve it like this, it will make this, if you have cut something like a little bit crooked or anything like that, it will fit back on the pipe again. If you just follow your, be very exactly on this line, it should be, the cut should be exactly like the other line and it will fit good.
like a glove. Now we're going to be running with the shorted pipe and I raised the ignition also one degree and it's two and a half degrees above original timing and that's because when the RPM goes up the original curve goes down and on 7900 RPM we have 13 degrees standard ignition but on 8000 we only have 12 and on 8100 we only have 9 degrees. So we're gonna aim for 8,000 RPMs. So that's why I reached the ignition one point. And we're gonna try to tune the pipe so it stops on 8,000 RPMs. Because we can't go any higher when the ignition goes down so much after 8,100. Because I can't raise the ignition only on the top. If I could do that, I would easily pull it on uh, 8100 or 8200 but we can't do that so we just have to go with what we got You can see here we have 152 horsepower on 8150 so we have really low ignition there and that's really bad because yeah we have to go lower so we have to tune the pipe make it shorter maybe we make it half no make it longer sorry a half centimeter longer and see if we end up on 8000 rpms instead i hope for that Perfect. Now we're gonna run with uh, a half a centimeter shim. So the pipe is now a half centimeter shorter than original. Or stop. So, now we reached peak power at 8050 RPMs, 155.6. Uh, now we're finished with uh, the E-Tech 800. It didn't go exactly like we wanted it, but that's why you run things in the dyno. Uh, I made some mistakes with my porting. I didn't check the ignition table for the 800 e tech and when I ported it, it wanted to reach higher RPMs. 
and the ignition table goes really steep down after 7900 rpms and that kind of fucked up my pouring if this would have been a carbureted engine then it wouldn't be any wouldn't have been any problem it would have pulled a lot better but it's the first time i poured one of these engine and this is one of those times you have to learn something so but we can sum everything together and we started at uh, 149.6 horsepower and 7900 rpms we the best overall thing you can put on an e-tech is the bondi box with fuel it makes a plus seven horsepowers if you raise your ignition one and a half degrees with the bondi box and you put on two percent no four percent of fuel then it will reach a seven hour horsepower plus the v-force gave 0 0.9 horsepowers and well it's not worth your money if you have them it doesn't it doesn't make anything worse but it's not worth paying for uh, dnd y pipe didn't work for us slp head didn't work for us my porting didn't work for us so in the end now I have 155.6 horsepower on 8050 rpms and that's the main problem that it, the rpm goes up too much but if I take the pipe as original I lose a lot more horsepower so that's why we shorten the pipe to go up in rpms because it still makes better power with the higher rpms but the ignition is low and I can't, ra I can't raise the ignition because then it will knock on uh, lower RPMs. So that's where we are at. And I uh, hope you have enjoyed our uh, session with the E-Tech 800. Uh, we're going to try some other machine. Uh, hopefully a Polaris Axis 800. And see how that reacts on stuff and pipes and porting and heads and whatever. So... See you next time and uh, hope you enjoyed it.